Today's lesson is Petra Jordan, the lost city. Hi, everybody. My name is Roger, and I'm Mike. And today we're going traveling, and、uh, we're going to go to the Middle East to a country called Jordan, which I believe is right next to Israel and very close to Saudi Arabia. And a lot of people go to Jordan to visit this place called Petra. Mike, have you ever been to the Lost City before? I have never been to the Lost City of Jordan or Jordan itself. Although a visit to Petra to see the beautiful treasury building there is, of course, I think, like many people, on my bucket list of travel destinations. It、might have been a good idea to go during the COVID period, which luckily is now ending because there weren't so many tourists there. It can be a bit of a tourist hotspot, but that's partly because it has such an interesting and long history, which we're going to be learning about today and tomorrow. We certainly are. I have not been there myself,、mm. and a lot of our listeners probably have not been there themselves. So that means we're going to find out about this place through our article. So let's do that right now. Let's listen to the first part, and then we'll be right back to discuss it. Petra Jordan, the Lost City, the capital of Jordan's Nabataean Kingdom. Petra was once a spice trading hub. After an earthquake left it abandoned for centuries, it became known as the Lost City. Today, this astonishing ancient metropolis is one of the new seven wonders of the world. 大家好，第一部分我们可以看到单词 abandon 这个字是动词，指的是弃置、抛弃或是终止。例如 ，Melissa's dog had been abandoned by its former owners. Melissa 的狗是被前饲主弃养的。或者 ，The Alaskan town was abandoned after the gold rush ended. 淘金热结束后，阿拉斯加的这座城镇就被遗弃了。另外，这个字的字尾如果加上 ed， 就会变成形容词 abandoned。它的意思是被遗弃的或是荒废的。像是 ，The abandoned factory was turned into lofts for artists. 那栋废弃工厂被改造成开放楼面给艺术家使用。或是。I reported the abandoned car that was parked in front of my house to the police. 我向警察举报了停在家门口的那辆废弃汽车。再来，我们看到形容词 astonishing， 它的意思是惊人的或是令人惊讶的。举例来说 ，The soccer team made an astonishing comeback to win the match. 那支足球队做出惊人的复出，赢得了比赛。又或者说。The archaeologist made an astonishing discovery in the Egyptian desert. 那位考古学家在埃及沙漠里有惊人的发现。另外，这个字如果去掉字尾 ing， 就会变成动词 astonish， 指的是使吃惊或是使惊讶。例如 ，Kyle's improved test scores astonished his teacher. Kyle 的考试成绩进步让老师大感惊讶。或者，我们可以说。The magician's final trick astonished everyone in the audience. 魔术师的最后一个戏法让观众里的所有人都大吃一惊。Okay, so we're traveling to Petra, which is in Jordan, a country in the Middle East, and Petra has this kind of nickname. The Lost City, a city that's hard to get to, and it seems kind of mysterious at the same time. Now, here in the first paragraph, it says, "The capital of Jordan's Nabataean Kingdom, Petra, was once a spice trading hub." Okay, so we're basically introducing this place to us. It's the capital of Jordan. Well, actually, not. It was the capital of the Nabataean Kingdom when there was that kingdom in that part of the world at that time. So it used to be the capital of this particular kingdom, and it was also a spice trading hub. Now, here, hub is that referring to the hub on your bicycle or on your motorcycle? Probably not. When we use hub, which could, of course, be part of a wheel, the inner part of the wheel is the hub, and of course the spokes, those sort of sticks that sort of come out from the middle of the hub, almost like the rays of a sun. They hold the outer part of the wheel, but the inner part of the wheel, that hub, is very important. And we use this word not just to talk about wheels, but to talk about an area where a lot of things come together. Airports are often described as modern hubs. These days, back in the old days, they had trading cities like 
Rome, of course, would have been a big hub. Cairo would have been a big hub as well, where sea lanes and pathways that travelers would take would all meet in this area. And in the same way, a large airport like Hong Kong, Singapore, London, Heathrow, these would be described as hubs because a lot of different trade routes, traveling routes, come together in that one area. So this was a really important area. They were bringing spice from Asia. Petra was really important in that route from the east to the west, bringing all these valuable goods. Then it says, after an earthquake left it abandoned for centuries, it became known as the Lost City. This is really the key to the mystery of Petra. It was abandoned for centuries, and it is kind of out there in the middle of the desert. You wouldn't expect to find a big city there, especially a big city that was empty and had been left behind by both people and time. And that is what we mean when we say abandoned. If you leave something and walk away from it and never come back, you have abandoned that thing. Think of a broken motorcycle or a broken down car by the side of the road or something like that. It's not worth fixing. You're not going to take it to the garage. You're just going to leave it there and let it rust and become part of history because it's been abandoned. But today, Petra has sort of had a new life, a uh, new spirit has been brought to it by all the travelers who want to see this place. As it says today, this astonishing ancient metropolis is one of the new seven wonders of the world. Yeah, I think astonishing is definitely a word we would use to describe this place, right, Roger? Certainly, indeed, it's astonishing, it's magnificent, it's spectacular. To astonish, that's the verb, it just makes you very, very surprised. I'm astonished at your behavior. Behavior. How could you do such a thing? But in this particular case, we're adding the ing to make it an adjective, and we're describing this metropolis as being astonishing. Well, it's not really a metropolis now because I don't believe many people live there, but it used to have a lot of people living there, and then an earthquake forced all those people away. The city was abandoned, and now it is a tourist destination. If you talk about a metropolis, of course, you're talking about a big city like Taipei or Taichung. Those are huge metropolises here in Taiwan. Okay, that brings us to the end of the first part of our lesson for today. Let's talk some more about Petra in the second part of our lesson. To enter Petra, you'll need to go through the Sik, a narrow pathway through a sandstone gorge. Walk through the 1.2 kilometer long ravine and admire the natural rock walls that stretch up to 80 meters high. At the end, you'll be met with one of Petra's greatest spectacles, the Treasury. This 40 meter tall building face is Petra's most famous site. It features grand columns and beautifully carved figures. The Treasury gets its name from a legend about an Egyptian pharaoh hiding treasure in the urn atop it. However, archaeologists believe the Treasury was actually built as a tomb for a Nabataean king. 接着第二部分，我们看到单词 spectacle。这个字是名词，指的是奇观、壮观的场面或是盛大的演出。例如 ，I enjoy watching the spectacle of lightning when thunderstorms pass by。我喜欢看雷雨经过时的闪电奇观。或是 ，The review in the newspaper said the show was a spectacle not to be missed。报纸上的评论说，这场表演是一场不容错过的盛大演出。再来，我们看到单词 site， 这个字是名词，意思是地点、遗址或是场地。例如 ，This site is supposed to be where the emperor died hundreds of years ago。这个地点被认为是数百年前皇帝驾崩的地方。或是 ，This field is the site of a famous battle that took place centuries ago。这块地是数百年前一场著名战役发生的地点。Okay, so we begin by explaining the second part of our lesson by reading the first sentence. It says, "To enter Petra, you'll need to go through the Sikh." A narrow pathway through a sandstone gorge. Now, a gorge is like a canyon that is very narrow. Of course, here in Taiwan, we have a world-famous gorge, Taroko Gorge, down there in Hualien. So, in this particular case, if you want to get into Petra, you need to go through this narrow pathway, which is called the Sikh. 
and that is a sandstone gorge. Sandstone, of course, is a kind of stone. It's relatively soft compared to other kinds of stone, but it's kind of like a little canyon that you have to walk through in order to get to Petra. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. If you've seen the Indiana Jones movies with Harrison Ford, I believe it's in the third movie, Indiana Jones and the Lost Crusade, I think, is the title. Anyways, they have a wonderful scene near the end of that movie where all the adventurers travel through the seek this narrow pathway, and then, of course, they get to see the beautiful city of Petra, as we are sort of reading about here. Walk through, it says, walk through the 1.2-kilometer-long ravine and admire the natural rock walls that stretch up to 80 meters high. Wow, I didn't know that this ravine, this narrow pathway through the gorge was so long, 1.2 kilometers. A ravine and a gorge are, are fairly similar. We're thinking of features of geography, features of the Earth's surface, where the land goes down, drops down very, very quickly, and then comes back up very, very quickly. So think of a, the kind of thing that you would stand on the edge of and definitely not want to fall into. If you fall to the bottom of a ravine or a gorge, you will obviously be badly hurt, and it might be hard to rescue you because it's a very narrow rock sort of opening in the earth where the land drops and then rises again very, very quickly. So you're walking through this at the bottom of this long ravine. You're admiring the natural rock walls, and of course the rocks there are kind of this beautiful reddish pink kind of color that can really come alive at sunrise and sunset. And these are some tall walls 80 meters high it says so imagine these walls almost towering right over your head and then at the end you'll be met with one of Petra's greatest spectacles the treasury yeah if you look up Petra or even just google Petra I'm sure one of the first pictures you'll see is the view from the end of this ravine towards the treasury because it is the one of the greatest and most famous spectacles of this city a spectacle is something basically wonderful to see to experience we we could think of a large, lavish party as a spectacle. We could think of a big sports event or the Oscars as a big entertainment spectacle. They'll be singing, they'll be dancing, they'll be stars, they'll be beautiful clothes, there'll be music, there'll be a big celebration of some kind, and it's really supposed to impress you or wow you. Another one you might have experienced is the fireworks spectacle at Taipei 101. It's not just a few fireworks, no, it's like three minutes of thousands of fireworks. It's a great spectacle. And in this case, the spectacle there is the Treasury. That is the name of this most famous building at Petra. And the name gives us an idea as to what the building was used for. It was a building used to hold gold, basically kind of like a big bank. That's what a treasury is. It's not a bank in the sense we understand it, though. It would be more like the National Bank or the King's Bank. It's where the king would keep all of his gold and silver and diamonds and treasures and things like that that. So it would basically control the money supply of the entire country, or certainly the city. Most of the money in the city would be held in safety in the treasury. Now this 40 meter tall building face is Petra's most famous site. So it's a building face. You've probably seen pictures of it. It's quite tall. It's 40 meters tall. And of course, it is the most famous site there. A site is a place that people go to because it's very popular. Uh, you have tourist sites here in Taiwan, of course. We mentioned Taroko Gorge earlier, but there are other famous tourist sites to check out if you are a tourist. Absolutely. Yeah, a lot of beautiful sites there as well. But back to the site we're experiencing, the treasury at Petra. It says it features grand columns and beautifully carved figures. Yeah, the front of it looks a lot like what we would think of as kind of a Roman-looking temple or even a more modern sort of European-looking church. There are grand columns. Columns are also sometimes called pillars. They hold up a roof or hold up a ceiling or something like that. So think of a tall, straight shape made of rock that is designed to be the support of a building and also among those columns beautifully carved figures the treasury says gets its name from a legend about an egyptian pharaoh hiding treasure in the urn atop it oh very interesting so maybe it wasn't actually used as a treasury that's just the name it's known by today and how did it get that name well the name apparently comes from a legend so this might not actually be history it's more like myth or a story that's been passed down through time, apparently an Egyptian pharaoh was hiding treasure in the urn 
atop it, atop the front of this treasury building. So I guess right up at the top there, there's an urn, which is like a vase. It's kind of a container for things. Often we put the ashes of a dead person in an urn, but you can hold other things in it. And apparently, if you can climb up to that urn and open it up somehow, you will find the treasure of an Egyptian pharaoh. And wouldn't that be a nice thing to find? Egyptian, of course, is the adjective for the country or anything, including the people from the country of Egypt. So if we think of Egyptian, yeah, we're thinking of the pyramids, the Sphinx, the pharaohs, Tutankhamun, Ramses II, you know, going back to that time, five, four, three, two thousand years BC, when Egypt was particularly powerful. And at the time, they, of course, had kings, but kings from ancient Egypt are not called kings or emperors. They are called pharaohs. So when you see pharaoh, all you're thinking of is an Egyptian king from that ancient time when Egypt was a real power in the area. And apparently the Egyptian pharaoh had so much money, he was hiding it in other parts of his kingdom, even as far away as Jordan. I'm not sure about this one. And I think some of the scientists would back me up. Well, Jordan isn't that far from Egypt, so you never know. You never know. You never know. But here in the next sentence, it says, However, archaeologists believe the treasury was actually built as a tomb for a Nabataean king. Oh. Now, if you're an archaeologist, of course, you're studying ancient civilizations. You're digging up artifacts from the ground like uh, old pottery or old structures and things like that. That's what an archaeologist does. Of course, they dig in the ground a lot. It's different from an anthropologist. That's a person who studies people, basically, the history of people and stuff like that. But uh, archaeologists, of course, dig into the ground and dig up artifacts and stuff like that. So they can be the experts oftentimes, and they believe that the treasury was uh, built as a tomb for a king. And we do see a lot of those things people do die nowadays they die and back then they died too and if they were a king ooh, they had to pay them great respect and bury them in a tomb which is a special grave for somebody important Yes, indeed, yeah. And of course, archaeologists have discovered many other things about Petra and some of these ancient sites as they dig and they find artifacts and stuff. It's very, very interesting. And we're going to hear more about the interesting city of Petra coming up in the next part of the article. Continuing on from the treasury, you'll pass through the Street of Facades, which is the site of dozens of Nabataean tombs carved into cliffs. Nestled farther up in those cliffs are the royal tombs. Believed to be the resting place of kings, these impressive tombs are a must-see in Petra. 最后第三部分，我们看到名词 cliff 指的是悬崖或是峭壁。例如 ，desperate to escape from the police, Melvin leapt off the cliff and into the shark-filled waters far below. 急于躲避警察的 Melvin 跳下悬崖。坠入满是鲨鱼的水中，或者我们可以说 ，We tried to climb the cliff, but it was too difficult. 我们试图攀爬峭壁，但实在太困难了。Okay, let's continue now with the third and final part of our lesson for today. We're talking about the treasury, but Petra has more sites to check out if you go there. So, continuing on from the treasury, you'll pass through the street of facades, which is the site of dozens of Nabataean tombs carved into cliffs. So, okay, you're、uh, walking past the treasury. You have just left the treasury. You checked it out. You were awed by it. It was spectacular. It was magnificent. You took a lot of pictures, and now you're ready to move on to the next site. And that next site is called the Street of Facades. And in this particular case, they represent tombs that were carved into cliffs. A cliff is a large stone wall that rises quite high. Over the surrounding land, of course, you've got cliffs here in Taiwan along the east coast between what is it, Suao and Hualien. There, there are quite a few cliffs there, and yes, indeed, these tombs are carved into those cliffs.
Yes, indeed. And nestled farther up in those cliffs are the royal tombs. Oh, okay. So the street of facades, I guess, was an area where a lot of the dead were buried. Maybe they did some of their funeral traditions, their funeral rites in there. And nestled farther up in those cliffs. When something's nestled, it's kind of stuck in there in a safe, comfortable position. You might be nestled on the sofa with your favorite book and a hot cup of tea on a cold winter night. You're sort of safe and comfortable in a protected area. So further up in those cliffs, I guess further away from where people might break in and steal things from the tombs, are some other tombs, and it says believed to be the resting place of kings. These impressive tombs are a must-see in Petra. Well, it sounds like you have to climb up to get them. I'm kind of interested to find out more about this. But yes, if you're a king, a queen, you know, a, a very wealthy and powerful person, you might have your tomb nestled in a safer position up the cliff. This is the resting place. We're not saying the kings are tired. We're saying they're dead. And this is where their tombs are. You could talk about a graveyard or a cemetery or any place that we put the remains of a loved one as their resting place. You know, it's just the place that we put their bones or their ashes or something. And these impressive tombs, because of course they're for kings and queens and powerful people, these impressive tombs are a must-see in Petra. Well, Petra itself is a must-see. So if it's a must-see, in a must-see place, you really must see it because it's a must-see. And if something is a must-see, yes, you have to see it. You will be angry with yourself if you go home and you didn't see it. Exactly. Like if you go to New York, the Statue of Liberty oh, is a must-see, must -see. for example. Okay, that brings us to the end of our discussion for today. Let's turn things over now to Hanny. Hello,同学,大家好,我是Hanny。我们来看今天的文法重点。课文一开始提到,约旦纳巴泰王国的首都佩特拉曾是香料的贸易中心。在一场地震使他被弃置了好几个世纪后,他被称为失落之城。那文
among, along, between, up 等等。举例来说 ，The little girl nestled her head against her mother's shoulder. 小女孩把头靠在妈妈的肩膀上。好，那么以上是今天重点整理。接着我们回顾今天的单词吧。Abandon. The old bicycle was abandoned by the side of the road. Astonishing. Zelda found the sudden change in her friend's attitude rather astonishing. Spectacle. The film was advertised as an amazing Hollywood spectacle. Site. It was decided that the meadow would be the future site of a new library. Cliff. Gary felt nervous standing so close to the edge of the cliff. Well, that brings us to the end of another edition of our program. And please make sure you join us again next time. From all of us here, I am Mike. I am Roger. See you next time. time.